Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Lucamus Prime here, so it's time for another franchise ranking build today. And today, guys, I'm going to be ranking what is one of my favorite action movie franchises of all time, which is for none other than Die Hard. So, yeah, now, guys, there are five movies in this franchise, and I'm going to be ranking them from best to worst, in my personal opinion. Now, I'm going to be honest, guys, and say that I really, really enjoy this franchise, I think it's really great. Except for one of them, which we're going to get to in this ranking. So, yeah. Now, I'm going to rank them from best to worst, in my personal opinion, guys. So, if you guys don't screen, it's absolutely fine. But please respect my opinion, just like I respect yours. Okay, so. Um, starting with what is easily my all-time favourite Die Hard movie ever. I'm going to definitely go 100% with the first film called Die Hard. Released in 1988, directed by John McTean. And so, yeah. So, so John McTiernan, after he previously directed Predator of the said went on to direct this movie, and yeah, and boy, did he absolutely nail it, yeah. I think it's probably his best movie, in my opinion, guys, and yeah, I really love this movie very much, so. So, so, so I literally have no problem with, with his first movie at all, guys. I really don't have any problems, I could say, so. But good, good qualities is, I think it has a really amazing cast of characters, so. So, for example, I really, of course, love the addition of the legendary Bruce Willis as his character called John McClane. I consider McClane to be his best role ever, because he absolutely nails this role. He's absolutely brilliant as him, and yeah. And in this movie, in, in this debut, he did such a great job playing John. He really did. He's an amazing job playing him. And I also want to give a big mention as well to the, to the legendary Alan Rickman, may rest in peace, for playing the villain of a movie called Hans Gruber. And, like, Hans Gruber, guys, is easily one of my favourite cinematic villains of all time. One of the best villains in cinematic history, in my opinion. He's just absolutely phenomenal. And I consider to be one of Rittman's best roles of all time. And, yeah, it's also really amazing, considering this is actually his movie debut, guys. His first ever movie, which is uh, which is incredible. And he just nailed the role. Like, and I consider Gruber to be, be the best villain of his franchise. And in, and, in my opinion, no villain will ever be better than him. No way. Not in my opinion. And his point cast is also very good as well. For example, I have edition of Joe or Takagi Aji as who is played by James M. Shigeta, who is the president of Nakatomi Trading, which is which is the business um, um at where the holiday party is taking place, of course, in the movie. I also as well like the edition of Holly McLean, played by Bonnie Bedelia, and who is John's ex-wife, Holly Janelle McLean. She's definitely really great in her role. And Harry Ellis, played by Hart, Hart Bockner, is, is also a good character, the sleazy businessman as well. And of course, um, Holly Secretary Ginny as well, played by Dustin Taylor, yeah. And the entire cast, however, was still definitely amazing in their roles, in my opinion, and yeah. And the action is also absolutely incredible, in my opinion, as well, guys. Absolutely brilliant, and yeah. As well as the cast, we've also got w Richard Thornburg, played by William Atherton as well, an unscrupulous TV reporter, who is also a good character, guys, and yeah, who I've caught also enough being Walter Peck in Ghostbusters, and yeah. Um, it's pretty cool how his character is quite similar, aren't they, in terms of personality, really, but yeah. And yeah, the action is really sick, guys. It's also got an amazing music score by Michael Carmen, may he rest in peace, and really great to listen to as well. And I want to ask people, guys, as well, that consider me to be a Christmas movie as well. Yeah, because in my opinion, it definitely is a Christmas movie, because it takes place at Christmas, and yeah. Really, really, definitely great feeling it has. Even the credits of the film have a Christmas song playing as well. And and also, guys, this movie also, of course, introduced probably one of the most iconic catchphrases in cinematic history, which is, which is of course, yippee ki -yay. <laughs> You know what, so yeah. Like, that's probably one of the, probably the best line in the franchise, in my opinion, guys, and yeah, probably the best thing Bruce Willis has ever said in his career, in my opinion, yeah, very iconic line, <laughs> really great to listen to, and there's also many iconic scenes, for example, the scene where John's climbing through a vent, and also, as well, the fight on a construction site, and I definitely think Hans Gruber's death scene, where he falls to his death, is definitely one of the most iconic scenes in the franchise, as well, and yeah, one of, one of the most mem memorable villain death scenes ever, like, wow, it's just absolutely brilliant, in my opinion, guys. And I think the whole story is, is actually done really well, in my opinion, guys, because 
It, of course, shows John visiting, visiting his estranged wife on Christmas Eve and at a holiday party in the headquarters of a Japanese-owned business that she works for. But then it's interrupted by terrorists who take over the building and everyone in it as hostages. And he's and John's the only one who can save the hostages. So, yeah, and he became a great action hero. And, yeah, my third reaction hero of all time, guys, after the Terminator from Robocop. So, yeah. So, how would I rank this movie, guys? I, will, I would rank this movie a flat-out 10 out of 10. Is, in my opinion, the best of this franchise. And probably my third movie of the year 1988 as well. Definitely a really amazing movie as well. And definitely, in my opinion, the best work of John McTeen. And, and now we're going to what is my second third movie in the franchise, guys. Which is actually the, the second sequel to this movie. Which is the third installment, which is Die Hard with a Vengeance. Released in 1995, once again directed by John McTeen. And, and yeah. And I, once again, love this movie, guys. In my opinion, it's the best out of the sequels to Die Hard, in my opinion. A really great movie, but... Obviously, I do play the first movie, but, yeah, so... So, what's great about this is that, once again, Bruce Willis, once again, does an amazing job playing John in this movie. You know, no one can play John better than him. This is definitely, in my opinion, his best role, and this movie is not, not exception because he was, once again, great in the role. And in terms of supporting cast, what is actually incredible, guys, is we got... A sidekick to McLean, which is the legendary Zeus Carver, who is probably my favorite uh, sidekick, played by one of my favorite actors of all time, Samuel L. Jackson, guys. And Zeus is such a funny, likable character, guys. He's really entertaining to watch, and yeah. And, like, probably the best character in shooting this movie, and probably, like I said, John's best sidekick ever. Like, such an amazing character, guys. And I consider to be one of Samuel, Jack Samuel L. Jackson's best roles of all time as well. So, yeah. And... But yeah, so yeah, Zeus was definitely really fun to watch. Um, and also, we got a new villain, guys, which is actually the brother of Hans Gruber, which is Simon Gruber, played by the great Jeremy Irons. And yeah, I think this is probably my favourite live-action role of Jeremy Irons, guys, because he, he did such an amazing job playing Simon in this movie. Did a really great job playing him. <clears throat> it's pretty cool that he plays the brother of Alan Rickman's character, considering that later, um, Jeremy Irons would, would occasionally play Snape from Harry Potter, who Alan Rickman also played in several, like, you know, um, sketches, which is pretty cool. And yeah, and in this movie, he of course, the, the brother of Alan Rickman's character. And once again, he, he did such, such an amazing job. And what I like about this movie, guys, is I like how, um, compared to the first two movies, this time, the threat is regarding a whole city. Because Simon Gruber is taking the entire city of New York hostage in a lethal game of Simon Says. So yeah, and he refuses to talk to anyone other, other than McLean because, of course, he hates McLean due to killing his brother. So yeah. And I think I think the plot was executed really well, in my opinion. And it was definitely a great follow-up to the first two movies. And definitely an, an improvement to the second movie, but yeah. The action is definitely really amazing to watch as well, guys. I love the action in the movie. Really fun to watch. And I think and I think John and Zeus had great chemistry together, and yeah. And this wouldn't, of course, you know, be the only time that, uh, you know, Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson would be on the screen together because um, they were, of course, both in Pulp Fiction a year prior. And they'd later go on to be in um, the Unbreakable trilogy as well, yeah. Um, which is pretty cool. And and not only that as well, but uh, music is once again great. And and once again, John does say Zippy Kaye catchphrase once again in a pretty cool scene, which is definitely his, the, the villain defeat. Because we get an amazing final battle, guys, which is with, with, with Simon Gruber in a helicopter. It's definitely a really cool fight scene, guys, where, where John says to him, say hello to your brother for me, then he shoots the helicopter down, and then it crashes. And then when it's crashed, John says, yippee ki -yay. <laughs> Which is really, definitely really fun to see. And, and so yeah, and the action is just absolutely amazing, guys. And once again, Mark, Michael Carmen once again, does a great job composing the music in this, absolutely. Definitely does a great job with, with the music in this. May rest in peace. And... Other honorable mentions of action scenes, aside from the helicopter uh, fight scene, it's probably as well um, the subway scene. That's definitely really fun to watch. And stopping the bombs going off. Definitely really fun to watch. However, I think probably my only issue with the movie, guys, is probably a scene towards the opening where John has to wear a sign which says, I hate M-word sign. So, yeah. Which is very racist, of course, and, and very offensive towards people who are black. Very offensive. So, yeah. Um, definitely didn't really like that scene, really, but... Nonetheless, but this is still my second favorite of franchise, guys, and I'd give it a 9 out of 10. So, yeah, I love this movie still, but still not as good as the first movie. On to what is my third favorite, guys. Now, 
I'm specifically talking about the unrated version of this movie, guys, which is for, um, actually the fourth installment of a franchise, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have minded if they ended with, with, with Dido of Vengeance, but this movie right here, guys, is in my opinion the true end to a franchise, which is for 2007's Live Free or Die Hard. So yeah, directed by Lem Wiseman, and yeah, I think this movie is a very underrated movie, guys, a very underrated action movie, definitely really fun to watch. So, so what I like about it is, once again, it's a great follow up to, to the first four movies, absolutely. And, um, um, and once again, Bruce Willis does, does an amazing job, job playing John, as always. And Justin Long, as well, was also really great in his role in this movie, as well. Definitely. He was definitely really great in the role. And I think his character and, um, and John McClane definitely really had, you know, great chemistry. You know, um, John and Matt Farrell, they were definitely really great together. I mean, What's funny, guys, is they had a way better father and son chemistry relationship compared to the actual father and son chemistry in the fifth movie, which I downright hated. And when it comes to the villain, guys, the villain of this movie is, of course, Thomas Gabriel, who is, who is of course, um, who is a cyber criminal, a tech savvy villain, yeah, who launches an attack on America's computer infrastructure, and he's played by Timothy Oliphant. And I can consider this to be his best role, guys, because he did such a great job playing him, and yeah. Definitely did a great job playing Gabriel in this movie. And so did Maggie Q as his assistant as well. She was definitely good in her. I think this might be my favourite role of Maggie Q as well. And I like how this movie did like an even darker tone with the first three movies as well. Because it of course is, is about John stopping all, all cyber criminals before they wipe out all the networks on the entire planet. And yeah. And I definitely think the unrated version improved all, all the, the theatrical version. Because um, yeah, there's something I didn't really like about the theatrical version. Which is why I prefer this version over it. So yeah. And the music by Malcolm Bartrami is great as well. And and the action is definitely really amazing to watch. And I also as well think that um, the way Gabriel is defeated is just absolutely brilliant, guys. And really epic and badass. It's really fun to watch. I also as well definitely like the addition as well of John's daughter. Who is, uh, of course, Lucy McLean, played by Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. And she's definitely um, a great supporting character, in my opinion, guys. And I love her chemistry with John. Absolutely. And I love as well how the movie also made references to Star Wars as well, which is pretty cool. And they made a reference to Raiders of Lost Ark with John stealing the semi-truck near the end of the movie as well, which is really cool. It reminds me a lot of, of the truck chase scene in Raiders of Lost Ark as well. And i got to say that the way Thomas is defeated by John is just brilliant because John, of course, is being held at gunpoint by, by Gabriel, who is aiming his gun in, into an already he shot bullet hole in John. And he, and he says to him that on his gravestone, it should say, always in the wrong place at the wrong time. But then John says, how about yippee ki -yay? Hmm, You know what? And then he shoots him through the already shot through the hole, and it shoots Gabriel and kills him. Like, that is just brilliant right there. Wow. <laughs> now, I, of course, prefer the unrated version of this scene, guys, because I think one of my biggest complaints about the theatrical version is it was rated PG-13, which Die Hard is not, because Die Hard is not a franchise for children, guys. It should have been rated R. Thankfully, the unrated version fixed this scene because in a PG-13 version, the swearing part of John McClane's famous catchphrase is muffled by the gunshot, so you don't hear the swearing. It's just yippee ki then the shot goes off. Yet, in the unrated version, John says the entire line before shooting it. And that is what one of guys, if not my favourite iteration of a Yippie Kaye scene, to be honest, guys. Just it was just so badass the way he said it in this movie. And and plus, guys, in my opinion, this movie game was the true end to Die Hard. It was definitely, in my opinion, the true end of a franchise. Because John is about to live in a nice peaceful life with his daughter. He's reconciled with her completely as well. And and of course he thanks Matt, Matt for saving his daughter's life, and yeah. And it looks like uh, Matt and Lucy are getting into, like, a, rom a romantic interest, so, yeah, which is very happy. So, yeah, in my opinion, that was a very heartwarming scene, guys, and definitely a really good way to, to end the franchise. And, yeah, so, how would I rank this movie? Well, I rank the unrated version 8.5 out of 10, but I give the theatrical version a 7 out of 10, because, like I said, guys, I don't like how they made it PG-13, and they, they, of course, censored John's famous catchphrase, and also... How he torn out some of the violence as well as I noticed, which is disappointing, and yeah. But nonetheless, this was still um, a very good movie, and in my opinion, it is the true end of a franchise. And I like to pretend that is. 
So, what is my fourth favourite, guys? On my fourth favourite, I'm going to go in with which, what is the second movie, which is Die Hard 2, Die Harder, released in 1990, directed by Rennie Harlan. So, yeah. Now, this may not be a terrible movie, guys. No, 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 absolutely not. But, in my opinion, it's, it's a lot weaker than the first movie. And also weaker than, of course, 3 and 4, as I've just mentioned. But, yeah. But still a little bit better than the theatrical version of 4, in my opinion. So, yeah. Based on my ratings. So, so, so a good quote is why it's still a good movie is because, once again, good thoughts of first movie. And Bruce Willis, as always, does a, does a great job playing John. You know, no one can play John Bevan him, in my opinion. And it has great action scenes as well, in my opinion. And... And the rest of the cast is also really good in, in the movie as well. For example, Bonnie Vidalia returns as well, which is great to see. It's good to see her return. And William Abbotson also returns as well in, in the movie, which is uh, pretty nice to see as well. You know, some familiar faces returning alongside John, of course. And also, Reginald Bell Johnson also returns from, from the first movie as well, as as John's policeman, Sergeant Al Powell, who is, who is in my opinion, a, a very good supporting cast member, in my opinion. And we even got as well, uh, Franco Nero playing General Ramon Esperanza, which is cool. And John Amos as Major Grant, who I, of course, know, know from Coming to America and its sequel, which is pretty cool to see him in this movie. And the main villain, I believe, is called is Colonel William Strip, uh, William Sadler. And, yeah, I will be honest, guys, and say that um, while he did a good job playing him and was a, go a, a good villain, in my opinion, I think he was a little bit weaker than, like, other villains, like... Because I think he was weaker, especially compared to the epic performance by Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber and, and Jeremy Irons as Simon Gruber. And probably a little, not as good as, as Thomas Gable, in my opinion, but still a very good villain, in my opinion, guys. Definitely not as bad as the villains are going to get to next. So, yeah. Still did, did a good job playing uh, Colonel Stewart. We even got an appearance by the great Robert Patrick, guys, as a sporting character called O'Reilly. And apparently, guys, this movie was what inspired James Cameron to cast for Apache in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which is pretty cool. You know, a year after this movie, which is pretty cool. And the rest of the supporting cast is also really good as well, guys. It's got a very good cast. And and also, guys, as well, I like how the plot is. It's it's since the first movie where it's like a hostage situation. But this time, guys, it's not a skyscraper like the first movie. This time, it's an airport. So I do like that change. And... Once again, it does have great themes of Christmas in it as well, which is nice to see. So I do consider this movie to be a Christmas movie as well, like the first movie as well. And and also, guys, as well, once again, the famous character of G.P.K.A. is featured in the movie, and in my opinion, a very epic scene because um because John says it before he before he throws like a cig a cigarette lighter into a trail of, of fuel, and then it causes the fire to spread, and then it hits the plane as far as the takeoff, and it blows up, like. And that explosion is probably one of, the, one of the best explosions of all time, in my opinion, guys. It was absolutely brilliant. Really great to see. And, yeah, and definitely a great way to, to, to defeat Stuart as well. Like, wow. Even Grant had, had a brutal death as well, where he fell into um into one of the um the plane propellers. Yeah, good. I think that was pretty brutal, weren't it? Yeah. And, and of course, John was also able to help Holly's plane land safely as well, due to due to a fire show or making a landing guard for, for the pilots, which is pretty cool. And it has a pretty nice ending where, where McLean and Holly are reunited, and yeah, and, and they get doing it by Marvin, which is definitely great to see. Played by Tom Bauer. And yeah, still a very good movie, guys, absolutely. And however, on to bad quality, so I've already said that um, Colonel Stewart is not as good of a villain as, as characters like, like Hans or Simon Gruber or Thomas Gabriel, but he's still a good villain in my opinion. And, and while it was... And while Michael Carmen's music was good to listen to, I feel like he recycled far too much from the first movie. He didn't really compose much new themes. I felt like he should have done more new themes, but it was still nice to hear the original theme from the first movie. And I think the violence wasn't as good as the first movie as well, in my opinion. But yeah. However, guys, I still think it's a good movie, nonetheless. Definitely a nice sequel to the first movie, and I would rank this movie a 7.5 out of 10. But now, we get on to what is, in my opinion, the absolute worst of this franchise. And it's for what is the fifth and hopefully the last Die Hard movie, which is for none other than 2013's A Good Day to Die Hard. <sighs> I absolutely hate this movie, guys. And yeah, like, this is not Die Hard. It, it, this movie absolutely sucks. And this, directed by John Moore. Now, 
I watched the movies in like a binge watch last year, guys, and I was worried about this movie because I've heard enough of bad news about it. For, for example, one of my good friends, Movie 120, hates it. This movie with a burning passion. And many other YouTubers also hate this movie as well. So I went in to this movie to see what I'd think of it. And, and guess what? I'm no exception because I absolutely hate this movie. Like... What on earth was this movie? This is not Die Hard at all. It's an absolute disgrace to a franchise. And yeah, like, I don't know why they do this movie in the first place. Because Live Free or Die Hard perfectly closed the franchise. This movie had no reason to be made at all. So yeah, honestly, this movie was just absolute garbage. And I don't blame Bruce Willis for hating this movie. He's since disowned it, admitting it's not a good movie. And he's right there. It's a terrible movie, in my opinion. And also, guys, I don't even call this Die Hard a good day to Die Hard. I call it a bad day to Die Hard or... A good day to kill a franchise. So, now, there's probably like only a couple of good qualities I could say about this movie. So, I guess the music by Marco Bartrami is still good, like Live Your Die Hard's music. But, but yeah, um, that's not really saying much because how bad this trash is. And also, even though she's hard in the movie, the scenes with Lucy returning are probably the only scenes in the movie that actually do feel like it's Die Hard. And when John McClane acts like John McClane that I know from the first four movies. And and I guess some of the action is okay, I guess. Pretty decent, but still pretty mediocre by the standards of what Die Hard should be. And now on to the absolute bad qualities. So, I think what this movie does, guys, which is absolutely ridiculous, is it absolutely ruins John in this movie. Like... The character we see going around Russia in this movie is not John. It's not John at all, in my opinion. I refuse to believe that's John McClane. Because they really changed him in this movie. They really ruined John in this. Like, because in the first four movies, he's portrayed as a hero who cares about other, other people. Yet, in this movie, he doesn't at all. Like, for example, he becomes an unlikable character in this. And he has no problem at all with, with, with attacking or even, even killing innocent people. Like, for example... There's a pretty stupid scene, guys, where where someone who is um, complaining to him in Russian is, like, you know, complaining to him. And then, and then for some stupid reason, guys, he punches them um, and, and asks them, do you think I understand what you're saying? Like, that is not the John I know. And there's even a pretty dumb scene where he's, he's like, driving recklessly on near pedestrians. Like, does he not care that he could have run over some innocent people? Like, that is not the John I know. No. I refuse to believe that's John McClane. And... I'm like, oh my god. And speaking of that scene where he punches someone, they used a very bad sound effect which sounded like it's from a cartoon. That was just so stupid. And also, guys, this movie also introduces probably the worst character in this franchise, which is which is which is John's son, Jack, played by, by Jay Corney, and oh my god. Jack was utterly annoying as hell. Like, oh my god, what happened with Jack in this movie, guys? They really ruined Jack. They made him such an incredibly annoying character in this movie, and honest to God, I couldn't bear watching. It was just, he was just terrible, like utterly annoying. And and he and Bruce Willis had no chemistry whatsoever. It was terrible chemistry. Like you'd think they hate each other really, and they pretty much do because they don't get on on at all. It's just so stupid. Also, guys, what's also bad is the the, the visuals, in my opinion, are also really terrible because. The cinematography is absolutely horrible. It makes you think you're watching a made the TV or direct to video movie instead of what's supposed to be a Die Hard movie. And the sound effects, like I said before, were terrible. Like, for example, that the punch was which sounded like a cartoon. And the dubbing work is also pretty bad because at one point during one of the chase scenes, they literally take a line from Live Free or Die Hard and insert it in. They don't, you know, like, you know, have any new lines put into a script. They just rip a line from a movie with the exact same audio. Like, that is ridiculous. And also, guys, the movie also, in my opinion, has absolutely awful CGI. For example, the scene where John and Jack are driving through the building, which is on fire, you can easily tell the that the fire is fake because it looks so bad, the fire. Oh, my God. And the pacing is also very slow, guys. Like, because when I was watching this movie, I was thinking, oh, my God, when is this going to end? Because it was so boring and it dragged on far too long. And plus, the villains of the movie are also terrible, guys, who are called Komarov and Irina, because, because we at first think they're good, but it turns out that they're, they're villains all along. And that's very frustrating, because it comes in way too late into the movie, because the movie spends most of the time focusing on Victor Chagrin and, and his lackey, Alik, as the main villains, which is ridiculous. 
And plus, guys, what's also ridiculous is the deaths of the villains being come of an arena. They literally rip off the deaths above Hans and Silent Group because, because, um, because when when um. When Komarov dies, he falls out of a building just like Hans, which is ridiculous. He falls out, out of a building and gets sliced by the helicopter blades in midair. And also, his daughter also meets the same death as Simon because he dies in a helicopter crash, which is just ridiculous. They couldn't have come up with anything new for their character's deaths at all. Like, even a laugh. And also, guys, as well, oh, even though this movie is rated R, it barely does anything at all to actually make it like an R movie at all. There's hardly anything in this movie which would, which would make me consider it to be R, R. It feels like a PG-13 movie. I mean, there's only like a few exceptions, which is why it could be R. Like, for example, guys, John actually does say his character is in this, guys. But the way he says Yippie Kaye is absolutely terrible. It absolutely sucked because he sounded so lifeless and soulless when he said it. Like, he didn't even care. Oh, my God. And plus, guys... You know how sometimes I prefer director's cuts or the theatrical version of movies? Well, this is actually an exception because I actually hate director's cut more than this because the director's cut actually it erases Lucy and all mentions of her from the story. So, like, why did it do that? I hated that. So, that was a very dumb move. Oh, my God. And and this movie also effectively covered our franchise, guys. It literally destroyed it. And, yeah. And... Hopefully we're not going to do anything anymore, and they probably won't do now because, um, obviously due to Bruce Willis' retirement from acting, so yeah, they're, they're probably not going to do any more movies, but I'm thank God for that because they should have ended it with Live Free or Die Hard. And yeah, but this movie is an absolute disgrace to the franchise, guys. It's just absolute garbage, and yeah, I can see now why lots of people hate it, because I definitely do hate it, and yeah, hmm. Like, oh my God, it was just absolutely terrible, guys. I don't know what they're thinking this movie, like... In my opinion, it's not Die Hard at all. It barely even qualifies as a Die Hard movie, in my opinion, yeah. So, guys, it was to rank out of 10. Well, guys, the theatrical cut, I give a, a 3.5 out of 10 due to featuring Lucy, and I guess the music is also good as well, in my opinion. But, because the director's cut erases Lucy from the story, I'm going to give it a give it 0 out of 10, because it was just absolutely stupid how they cut her out. So, yeah, because she's probably the only thing that makes like a Die Hard movie in, in the theatrical version. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so guys, I like to say Die Hard is only four movies, and I'll be covering Live Free Die Hard in my series of movies in, in a sequel, so yeah. So guys, this is me doing my, my ranking of the Die Hard movies from best to worst, so first place will be Die Hard, second place will be Die Hard with Avengers, third place will be Live Free or Die Hard, the unrated version, uh, fourth place will, will be Die Hard 2, Die Harder, fifth place would be Live Free Die Hard, theatrical version, then sixth place will be a good day to Die Hard, theatrical version, and last place will be, will be a good day to Die Hard's, just called you to Raising Lucy, so yeah. Um, so you know, drill guys, be sure to give this video a like. Also, leave your comments what you guys would rank with our movies. I'd love to see you guys would rank them. Also, be sure to join Team Prime by pressing subscribe for movies coming in the future. If you'd like to be a member, you can join me in the description, and I'll see you all later.